Have you ever seen people slam scarecrows in films that get really deep in them? Tongues in the mouth, you know, all of the things. Lay a scarecrow out, just start slamming away, going heels to Jesus with scarecrows. I had a lot of things ticked on the list after watching X, so I thought this one was going to be pretty disturbing too. But I would have never have put scarecrow slamming down. Let's talk scarecrow slamming and let's talk A24's Pearl. Welcome to the Cheap Trash Cinema Podcast. This is episode one. If it does well, I'll keep doing more and we're going to do this in between our animated episodes. So you get more content out and it gives us an opportunity to talk about recent movies. And this is the reason why it's going to be in a podcast is so we just don't get blocked by putting images or video footage of newer films out. So yeah, fuck all that, right? Well, let's get on with it. We've travelled back in time and Pearl is younger and hornier than ever. Pearl is co-written by the film Scarecrow Slam at Maya Goth. It's also produced by A24. And if you haven't seen an A24 film before, I suggest you check them out because they... I love them. I really, really enjoy them. They really get you thinking and questioning your own morals, a lot of them. We first meet Pearl in A24's X, where Pearl is a horny old grandmother who seeks out smooth dong, not the wrinkly, shriveled kind. X was a surprise hit. I get... Well, I guess there's a market for horny killer grandmas. There's a market for horny killer grandmas. JJ, fuck off. This is my podcast. Get out, you scumbag piece of shit. Nobody likes you. And if this is your first episode and you, you don't know who JJ is, click the link in the corner and you'll soon find out about him. Fuck off, JJ. Dear me, dear me. He's a scumbag piece of shit and I hate him. Back to it. The look to Pearl is like a nice pair of boobies or dong that has lashings of Yorkshire tea splashed onto them. The, the look reminds me of movies like Mary Poppins and Wizard of Oz, which is the visual feel they were going for when piecing together this movie. While X had the gritty visuals of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was the look that they were going for and may I add they absolutely nailed the, that look of that movie, but the look of these movies is one of many things that Pearl hits on all cylinders. We're introduced to Pearl at the start of the film. Everything's colourful, you know, and the aura feels good, feels good. Pearl, a cute farm girl that's not only helping her mother take on the farm, she's also helping take care of a disabled father. Pearl's doing all of this while her husband is sent out to war. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again! Pearl is essentially holding her family together. She's a tough woman, but under Pearl's perfect persona is a dark passenger. A dark passenger that has a thirst for blood. Pearl sacrifices her own personal life so she can help her family. Unlike anyone that sacrifices parts of themselves for others, stress and frustration is abound. But come on, you beautiful bastards, you like horror. If you're listening to this, you know exactly how she relieves that stress. No, it's not by scarecrow slamming, by the way. We need to get to that. And if you've clicked on just for this, for the scarecrow slamming, you disturb me. You disturb me. But if that's what you like, good for you. I'm very, very pleased for you. But Scarecrow slamming aside, how does Pearl end up being the psychopath that she is? Let's explain. Pearl is on the barn, she's having a lovely time, right? She's having a sing-song while tending to the farm animals. She's not tending to the farm animals in the way that you're probably thinking though, you dirty pieces of shit. <laughs> she's happy as life, fantasizing about being a star. She's dancing in the barn with a pitchfork. Then a cute little goose walks in to say hi, but this little chuff Better have just been laid because today, my friends, today is this goose's last day on earth. Pearl sticks that pitchfork straight through the poor little bugger. Pearl's a fucking psychopath. Her dark passenger is a fucking looney tune. Pearl is a story about a psychopath that deep down wants to be good. She really tries hard to put the psycho in her into the back of her head. Just like the pitchfork and the goose. Like I explained earlier though, Pearl puts her own needs aside. But one evening she tells her mother that she wants to go in for an audition as a singer and dancer. Pearl's mother expresses that Pearl is not going due to being needed at home. Pearl then expresses how much she wants this one chance to follow her dreams. She tells her mother that if she fails she'll go back and carry on as normal. Which is fair enough right? She's tied down to this barn, came for her mother, came for her father. She's putting her own needs aside and she just wants this one chance and I can completely, completely understand that. But instead she argues that her mother says no and she argues with, with her and then she sets some mother on fire in front of the cabbage of her father. That was a bad taste joke, wasn't it? Then Pearl throws her mother into the cellar after barbecuing her tuckish. That got dark fast, didn't it? Let's rewind and talk about the initial build-up to how this event happened. 
As I said earlier, Pearl does kill animals around the farm for giggles. Although she does kill, she does try really hard not to do the deed. But one day, Pearl goes into town for goods for her family, medicine for her dad because he is really sick. She uses the time to go to the movies as her dreams are to be a star in the town. In this town, she never had the opportunity to ever try to go for her dreams as she's trapped while caring for her family. While at the theatre, she meets a man. She meets this gentleman that invites her in to his apartment and he tells her that she can be whatever she wants to be. That's fucking lovely, isn't it? We all need somebody like that in our lives. Pearl isn't a very confident woman. So for her, obviously, it's really good for her to hear because she never hears any uh, nurturing things from her parents. And so she slowly finds her confidence due to this chap telling her that she can achieve her dreams if she puts effort into it and just, just goes for it. But we all know that this is to get into Pearl's pants. But before that happens, Pearl's back at it again, doing what Fruit Loops do best. She's on the farm, takes a fancy to a good-looking scarecrow. It's all innocent at first. She wants to be a star, so she innocently dances with it. Then it takes a turn to crazy town. She starts she starts tonguing it. You see her tongue slipping, and you think, oh, what's going on here? She then stops and tells a lucky bastard that she's married. <laughs> then she gives in to her urges and starts plowing away at the scarecrow from Wizard of Oz. She then lays the lucky lad out on the floor and goes heel to Jesus with it, really fucking going for it. You see it all, it's... Um, it's not for everybody. I've seen some messed up stuff in film, but damn, this woman is thirsty. That husband needs to come home and see to Pearl's crops because that woman has needs. This woman has needs. We also see moments with Pearl and her father. Pearl sees to his every need. She's a really good daughter to him at first. She clothes him, she bathes him, she clothes him, and she feeds him. You can see that she does really love and care for her father. In her own sick, demented way, of course. This is when things do get darker for Pearl's psychotic needs. And in some scenes, she'll nip her father and strangle him while knowing that he can't tell a soul as he can't move or speak. But I think that's her way of showing how frustrated she is that she's just tied down to her mother and her father and by caring for them, she doesn't really have her own life which is incredibly wrong for her to do, but you know why she's doing it, that's all I'm saying. But Pearl is a woman that wants more out of life, but she's afraid to leave her parents due to having a guilty conscience. So she has got something there, she has got a good side to it and a bad side, which I've tried to, which I have already discussed. But as I stated earlier, she meets a new man that tells her that she can be and do anything that she wants. This is where Pearl starts to take in that her family is holding her back from achieving her dreams. Which is sad because, you know, there are truths to it. There are truths that that is actually happening. She actually is, she is being held back by her family. But it's just a sad circumstance. She's not being really held back in a negative way. She needs to take care of her father. Because she's got nobody apart from her wife. From, apart from his wife. That she, she cries herself to sleep every night. And it's really sad to see. And all they've got is Pearl. And then they do need her. They do need her. And she's doing all this while her husband is away. And while her husband is away, she's gonna go out and play because she's a horny bugger. Obviously, this guy that's telling her all this positive stuff is doing it so he can, you know, he can go to Slam Town with her. And, and, and he does. This is where she goes home and then tells her mother that she's going into town for an audition because she wants to travel the state singing and dancing, which you can understand sounds fucking great, doesn't it? This is where we learn that her mother told, tells Pearl that she knows that she's half baked. And she's not meant to be out in the big wide world due to being different. But shit goes down though. Pearl, she sets her mum on fire in front of her dad, then puts the fire out, and then throws her poor mum, well, then throws her poor mother, while she's still alive, may I add, into the cellar and locks it. Now her mum's locked up in the cellar and her dad can't tell her what to do, she does decide to go to this audition. But I believe, if I remember correctly, before she goes to this audition, she puts her father out of his misery. Um, and before this, she actually does cry and tell her father that she does love him very much. And she just can't care for him anymore. She wants to go her own way in life. And she kills him. Which is, that's terrible. It's awful. But you can also see her frustration. And it's a really messed up situation all around for everybody. But yeah, Pearl goes to this audition. She does put on an incredible performance. The scene itself is absolutely phenomenal. It's... It's, it turns into a musical where it shows you what's happening in her head. And in her head, it's all perfect. And it is anyway. She puts on a fantastic performance. And after the performance, they tell her that she's not good enough. And that's terrible because she is actually really good at what she does. 
and then she asks why and she's in a horrible state of discomfort after this she's crying in hysterics she really is losing it and they tell her why and this is really sad they tell her it's because she's not a stereotypical american girl she's not incredibly pretty which maya goth is incredibly pretty anyway may I add. she hasn't got blonde hair blue eyes and without saying it the they was also insinuating that she's not got big boobies which is awful so um, that's terrible you know she had, she actually had it all she had the talent she was incredible but they just went on looks which also in you know in reality it, it is a thing that stops people from doing what they want because people are incredibly shallow and that was really sad to see as well because her life is just going into ruins it's partly her fault but it's also the partly the fault of others and it's also you know just situation, sad situations for her, which is terrible. And then she goes into hysterics because she very quickly realizes that she has to go back to a life that she hates and she loses it. She went to the audition with her sister and guess what? Her sister has blonde hair and blue eyes. After the audition, she doesn't tell uh, Pearl that she's got it though, because she can see how upset she is with it. So they both go home to, uh, sorry, this is a sister-in-law may I add, sorry about that. Uh, they go to Pearl's house. And they sit at the table and Pearl just comes out with it. She tells her how frustrated she is with life. This scene is incredible, by the way, and Maya Goth needs an award for it. She explains that she's a psychopath. And her sister, well, she, then she knows that her sister won the audition and she tells her how happy she is. She's ecstatic that her sister's won this audition. And you can tell that she's happy, but also the dark side to her is saying that this bitch needs to die. <laughs> this bitch, I'm gonna cut this bitch. And uh, your sister, at, by the end of this conversation, the, um, she you can tell that she's shit her pantaloons and she wants to leave. She leaves, and she does leave, and as you see her leaving, you see uh, she's quite a ways ahead of the house, and you see in the background Pearl walk out, and she's got this big smile on her face, and you think, oh, maybe she's turned good, she's going to accept her responsibilities, even though she's already fucking killed everybody, but, you know, she's going to wait for her husband to come back and be the, a good wife, whatever. Um, which I don't actually like. I don't think a, a woman should tend to a man's needs. It, everything should be equal. But yeah, Pearl has poured her heart out to her sister out. And it is incredible acting. And if you are a movie of film, not just horror, this is a scene that you need to see. It's an incredible performance. And I really do hope that she does win awards. But as I was saying, uh, Pearl's walked out of out of her house now. And her sister's just walking off all happy, thinking everything's nice. And she sees Pearl. She turns around and she sees Pearl. Pearl grabs an axe as Pearl sits on a throne of lies. She is not happy that her sister <laughs> is destined to live the life that Pearl wanted. She does. She sits on the throne of lies. She has the axe. And she's oozing with jealousy by this point. You can see this on the expression on her face. And she can also see that she's enjoyed Scarecrow slamming by the expression on her face too. But that's not what we're talking about right now. But let's go back to it. Pearl actually does what she does best. She leans into that dark passenger. She grabs the axe. The cinematography in this scene is phenomenal. It's um, it's looking down on them, so you know you see the tops of their heads. And she's running at her sister. She starts hacking away into her sister's bag, but due to the adrenaline her sister has, she wants to get away. She doesn't stop running. And because of the top-down camera and seeing them running, the scene's gorgeous. It is, you see the whole, the huge trail of blood. Um, on the floor in a line as they're running forwards as she's um, hitting her with an axe and if you like cinematographer this scene will blow you away it's something that you have to say for yourself and then yeah she proceeds to kill her sister and Pearl has essentially ruined her own life due to her dark desires to kill she's wiped out everyone around her and isolated herself to a life that she hates Pearl does leave some questions yet to be answered though as at the end of the movie Pearl's husband comes home to a house of death Bodies everywhere. It's like fucking. It's like the original Hellraiser. We know in X. He. he we know in. It, we do know it in X, which is the first movie out of the three. I'll talk about the third one later. And we know in. It, it, um, yes, in X, the husband actually helps to cover up the kills, and he also kills a few people as well. But in this one, he seems innocent. We don't know if war's damaged him or what. We never get any answers. All we see is Pearl. In, in in you know in the house and she she smiles at her husband as he walks in you don't actually see the expression on her husband's face so at this point we're not sure if he already knows about her sick desires to kill we don't know if he helps her or not either cover her up but um, this is where the credits roll on her Maya Goth's face close up and she's smiling looking happy that he's home and there's no scenes that cut off she is doing this all the way to 
most of the credits and you see a, a, a smile on her face very very slowly turn to insanity and it turns to anger you can see her fucking losing it and there is room for another movie a sequel to Pearl itself which would be great to see where we would discover that you know how the husband turns out to help her killing and whatnot but I feel like I'm rambling too much by this time so I'm just gonna tell you what I think about it Pearl is one of the best movies of 2022 for me it's a very different film to the first in the franchise X which isn't a bad thing at all it makes it feel refreshing Pearl like X is a satisfying watch for me it's a dark spin on the Wizard of Oz you see Pearl with the potential to have a great life but instead we get to see her plunge deeper and deeper into insanity and it's, it's sad to see especially when you see her slamming a scarecrow but if you've seen X then you'll know that this woman loves to plough but who doesn't right? Do you want to know who else likes to plough? Our patrons, High Ground Cantina, Gory B Movie and Horror Addicts like to slam together even Short Story Slam does Haunted by Horror likes to dabble in it too I actually have no idea if this is true you know You'll have to ask them yourself. <laughs> Just type it in on YouTube and, you know, all the channels will come up. Let's round it up. If you enjoyed X and visually stunning movies with phenomenal acting that also has the full frontal stuff too. Yeah, it has the full frontal stuff. No dongs though, unfortunately. We need more dongs in films. Uh, yeah, you know I advocate for that. Pearl is actually a rabbit hole of fun for me. It gets darker and darker as the movie progresses. Let's do the test. Is Pearl cheap? Hell nah. Pearl doesn't cheapen us with bad cinematography. It actually looks outstanding and gives us 100% with everything that it has to offer. Is Pearl trash? Nah! It's a beautifully told story of a woman that has the potential to have a solid life, but she battles her demons in order to keep it at bay. Is Pearl good cinema? Heck yeah it is. You know a film's good if it makes a great conversation between friends. When myself, Horror Addicts and Goy B. Moo were chatting about it, it was all positive, baby! But I've said all I want to say, there'll probably be a few things that I want to say after, but I'm not going to re-edit it because, you know, it's like that with every video, and is it, isn't it? Nothing's perfect, nothing's ever finished, you always want to add to it, you always want, there's always something to add. But you've been listening to the Cheap Trash Cinema Podcast, this was episode one, and if you've enjoyed it, please let the algorithm know, hit like or hit the thumbs down, it works either way, bye bye. If the show does well and you enjoyed it, then we'll keep at it, we'll release them in between our main animated episodes. But I do want to take this opportunity to tell you what's next in Cheap Trash Cinema. Our next animated episode will be on The Greasy Strangler. Gory B Movie and Horror Addicts have been telling me to watch it for quite a long time. And then one day they came over to visit me and we did watch it. They were like, hey, I've got this movie for you. I was like, you sly dogs, you. And then we sat down and watched it. I'm going to tell you, it's fucking phenomenal. But well, what's The Greasy Strangler about? The Greasy Strangler was about the love between the son and the father, while in between this, the father takes his clothes off and he hangs dong. His dong is fucking massive, it's one of the, the biggest dongs I've ever seen in film. It's got some fucking length to it, I can tell you something. But yeah, from <laughs> the dong, he covers himself in grease and then strangles people, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's fucking great and I can't wait to get that episode out. Please be patient because we really, really want to take us time with this episode. Make it the best we can for you, our beautiful, beautiful viewers. Uh, we also have a Patreon account, obviously, because I've just said what I've said. We have a second tier now where you can get your name on IMDb as a producer and you will also get shout outs at the end of every video. Now we're at the end of the video, it's time for a shout out. Thanks for Goy B Movie, Horror Addicts, my buddy Kevin from Haunted by Horror that I did a live stream with about Halloween 6 on Goy B Movie's channel. Check it out. It's pretty fucking good. I'm incredibly drunk in that video as well, so you probably have fun watching it. High Ground Cantina, um, Short Story Slam. I don't know if I said that already. I do apologise. It's very early in the morning. Um, but yeah, um, check out Patreon if you want to see what, what we've got to offer. I've just added an, another tier where um, you will be on our IMD page as a producer. Just listening back, I do apologise for that. What the fuck is an IMD page? I meant IMDB page. <laughs> And you will also get a shout out at the end of the video. And if you want more from us, you can also find us on Letterboxd too, where I do written reviews. Here's some facts on Pearl. If you ever go to watch it, wait till the end of the credits because you will see a trailer for the third one in this set of films called Maxine. There is a full frontal pornographic film within this movie that's shown to Pearl. And the movie is called The Free Ride and it was made in 1915. It's a real vintage stag film. 
So, you know, but if you're filthy enough, go check it out. Knock yourself out. To prepare for the tone of this movie, director and co-writer Ty West suggested that Maya Goth, who plays Pearl, watch Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, 1962, and that The Wizard of Oz, 1939. Ty West and Maya Goth collaborated on the script via FaceTime during a mandatory two-week quarantine, you know, due to that bastard COVID-19. This was in New Zealand prior to filming X, which came out in 2022. They had only hoped A24 would agree to make the film, but fortunately for them, the project was greenlit before filming even began on X. Lucky buggers. And, you know, we got something great out of it. Thanks for listening. We will see you in November with The Greasy Strangler. And we may have a second podcast out right after that one in between our next animated video after that thanks for listening i love all of you motherfuckers I, if, if i could i'd buy you all yorkshire tea and i'd spoon feed your soup the best this soup the, your favorite soup because i just love you i want you to be warm this fall warm tea and soup lovely anyway i'm rambling too much i'm out city join our damn cult i'm just gonna slap this on the end here i realized that i didn't talk about the third one which you see the trailer for it at the end of pearl and it's going to be called maxine which Maxine is a survivor from X. So check that out. It doesn't really show you much. It just shows you the Hollywood sign written in the font, um, written in, in the Hollywood font of Maxine. That's all it really shows, but there is three X's in it. So it's probably going to be filthy, yeah, but we'll see. Anyway, see you there.